Uh, what else? Do we want to mention any of these other things? Like the Xbox storage expansion cards getting price permanent price cuts? I bought one. No, I mean, You're only because you everybody. brought it up at the, at the right. top of the show, the, the 100 greatest games ever made yes. list was released on uh, GQ magazine. They got a lot of people to actually uh, do this. Oh, I can't see that. Part was Space it. Invaders? What number was Space Invaders? Uh, I don't believe oh, I'm not looking at this list. list. Look at this. Isn't there just like a list list? That I have is to this scroll? one of the things? Is this something that I have to click through every game? No, no it scrolls. Scroll. It's just a lot of scrolling, and I was trying to do it. It lazy right, loads. Like number 100, so. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> 99. 99, Res. Yeah, no, we're not going to do I'll that. I'll do if the anything, bottom 50. I would, <laughs> I would say only starting at, I'm going to start at 11 because I find that 11 should be higher, and that is Resident Evil 4. No, 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 no. We're only going to read one, and it's number 69, which is Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Well, 10 is Half-Life 2, 9 is Dark Souls, 8 is Portal 2, then 7 is Metal Gear Solid, 6 is Mass Effect 2, 5 is The Witcher 3. This is, list is dumb as I scroll through it. It's yep. completely four, meaningless. Four is, four is Bloodborne. Sure. Bloodborne is the fourth greatest game ever made. Did you know that? Yeah, I figured. Yeah. I had it at number three <laughs> on my list. Uh, three is Tetris. Two is The Last of Us. And one is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they had this like 100 people that voted on this. More, I think. Yeah, from all era. You oh, know, here's all, the list. There's a list of all the people who voted. Yeah, I know. I'm saying it's like, it's all, it's everybody you've ever heard of that's worked in video games, or and some people who work on video games. It's not just. Thank fucking god. Fort, Fortnite ask came me. in at number eighty one. <laughs> I know. I was sure. impressed to see Fortnite on the list. Right um, behind Firewatch. Yeah, Michael Pactor <laughs> was one of the people. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, they didn't ask uh, any Tony of Act us. Pro Skater Good, 2 thank God. This is, this is, I don't believe this list at all. Who the fuck oh, no, wants to a, write this list? It's a weirdly bad list for the amount it's of too people. too general. That... You can't ask people the top 10, their, the top 10 best games ever made. That's fucking so, it's too many to choose from. And it's just like, it's so too general, way too general. It's like I didn't fucking... realize people like Disco Elysium so much that it's number 12. Like, I didn't even know... Because they're like, asking all the these game, super super nerds. I literally know nothing about it. I played it. I bought it, and I played a few hours of it. It's fine. It's it's just like a tech. It's like an adventure, a graphical adventure game. It's I don't. What number is it on the list? It's like twelve or something like that. I don't like know, crazy whatever. high. Where's Pac Man? Is that like for number five or something? I, th I don't know if Pac Man's even on what? the list. I don't think there's Pac Man no, or is. Ms. Pac Man. Oh come oh, on! It's not. It's ridiculous. It's, bullshit. it's not even on the list. That's what I'm saying. Journey is on the list. This game also says that the Outer Wilds is better than the original Super Mario Brothers, which, you know, I'm not saying the Outer Wilds is a bad game. I'm just saying in the grand scheme of things, there is no Outer Wilds without Super Mario Brothers. I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I'm saying anything crazy. It's not a hot take. Right. Oh, this is GQ UK even. It's not even American GQ. You should have asked the British gaming journalists. It's very strange. Hades at number 38. Hades is better than Super Mario Brothers. They like the roguelikes. These, I mean, these nerds. Yeah. There's some weird crap on this list. That's all. They have The Sims being better than The Sims 2. They do have The Sims being better than The Sims 2. You know why? Because I think The Sims... But again, the in the Sims grand... Is better than The Sims 2? It's not even that The Sims is better than The Sims 2. Is that The Sims kind of changed video games in a major way. What are we way. voting on, though? Like, the best right. 100 video games? Or what are, what are we voting Most on here? I don't know. Games? I mean... The greatest video games of all the time. The greatest. Okay. Greatest. I, it's, that's I why think these lists probably are Sims, Sims, whatever number we're on now, four? It's probably yeah. better than... <laughs> exactly. Than The Sims 1. Sims 1. But, this, but what The Sims did for gaming... I, think I don't care. They have, they have Super Mario know. Brothers is like num number 96. Well, that's on what I'm list, saying. Right? It's like, like, I don't right. know if it Get understands what it wants to be. It, nobody knows. Or, yeah. yeah it's, we've talked about it too much. We're just getting okay. frustrated. Mm -hmm. All right. Actually, we'll give our top 100 next episode. <laughs> Never. I'll get started. Um, where are we here? Oh, we have to do a Spank Banky from Whip Smart Banky. He, he implored me. So this is a big on one. That. This is an important okay. one, he said. This is Mugen Souls. Mugen? Is that how you say that? This you is a big deal, me. apparently. I remember this one. I, I 
I played some of this C. way back when. Right. It's a Switch release of a 2012 PlayStation 3 RPG. It was once censored in the West. And it's from the developers of Neptunia and Fairy Fencer. And Banky says aficionados will know what this means. Aficionados means perverts. Me. Preverts. Me. Oh, and me. And, and ship. Great. Um, he says it's delightfully bright and it's got colorful graphics and unapologetically chaotic. It's not for the casual RPG fan and hindered by its dated design. Um, but it's originally censored bathhouse minigames has been restored to its full glory and exactly what you think it is. You can touch, rub, and lather the ladies up, ship. So you missed that from the first one. I did one. miss that out on the, on the first one, I guess. I feel like you could really enjoy this game now. He said it comes with all the DLC from the original release. And it's important. Oh, this is the important part. I bold faced this. It's important to support this type of interesting gem that was otherwise censored and may have been otherwise lost to obscurity and good taste. No, no, I added the good taste part. Um, and East Asia Soft gave us the review code. So it sounds like he likes it and he says it's important. It's not just a game, it's an important part of our history as human beings. Thank you, Banky. Um, a couple of CAG bag questions, if we can. This one is from... We can. We can. I feel like we, we can. can. Just a couple here. Mm -hmm. uh, one's from Christian. He writes in and he says, if you had to pinpoint it, what was the moment video games stopped getting better year over year? Did they? They're just, they used to be... Been kind of stagnant for a yeah. while. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yes, of course we could pinpoint it because it was a cataclysmic event that happened mm -mm, to every single before, person that's before, listening. Before, before that. Before. I don't think so. I yeah. think it's COVID. I think it's 100% COVID. I think that without it, we probably wouldn't, things would have been very different. I think that year of whatever, you know, happened, not being able to make games the way that games were being made before, you know, it, it definitely had a huge impact. And I think that's mm. the only reason why. This should, have been, this should have been one of the easiest industries to continue on in COVID. Yet it wasn't. Yes. I, I mean, let's face it. Hindsight's twenty twenty. I don't think they were prepared, you know, infrastructurally for game development being done remotely. I think what he's maybe saying is that the games are only getting incrementally better like and that that increment is real is smaller well, than I mean, it was the, maybe the other reason for that also 10 is years ago there was a you know the the switch or the 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 need for the always on live service element of every game definitely hurt the ability for innovation in games well not the need but like the desire to cash try to cash in on some of yeah, that to, stuff to get that to get that hook to have that one game where it doesn't work all the time it's very hard to do a lot of resources and, went to, to making games like that and they and, and they most failed. of them failed horribly and if those resources you know if, for all we know if anthem was the game that anthem was supposed to be We'd still be. It would be on that list, that GQ list. Can't but blame instead, COVID on that. It, it might have been. I don't know. Yeah, but <laughs> you're right. No, I'm saying, and you can't blame COVID. I'm. I was agreeing with you. I'm saying if they didn't try to shoehorn in things that didn't belong there, who knows? And there are so many I think games it's way like before it. COVID. Yeah, I think it's way huh? before COVID. Yeah, I think I would trace it back to when, like, all of the companies became only like five companies now that make games like you used to have a lot of innovation because there was a lot of players in the game right so you had publishers and they might be they might not be the top tier publishers but you would have ones that would like come out with a game that would be interesting and be like worth playing it would have like a unique voice to it and but still be like a high enough budget to where it wasn't like just like the indie like sure type game it was like a big game it was just you had so many different voices back then now there's like i don't know there's only there's only so many publishers right left right Not that many left and they don't want to make a game like that they want to make a game like wombat was talking about earlier which is like a, a moonshot game of service right which you know maybe we'll make a billion dollars off it or, or lose or lose 200 million um or like just sequels 
of existing franchises. And all, yeah, all those of companies Duty, did that, doubled down on that. Like Call of Duty used to be a game that would innovate on itself over different iterations through Call of Duty 4. Then after Call of Duty, it's like you know, after Call of Duty 4, it became a different type of game. It became a game about live service. It keep it's now about you know we're gonna sell the components of the game separately, and the story and pushing those boundaries. You know, Call of Duty isn't in the news anymore for pushing the boundaries of what can be done in a game story wise. And when the Xbox 360 came out and Call of Duty 2 was it two right? I mean, that looked unlike anything that we had ever seen before. And it strayed away from being something that wanted to be an industry innovator to wanting to be an industry money leader. And that's the that's the change. And I'm not saying that Activision's wrong for doing that because it worked out very well for them, clearly. But that's except for now, except for well, but all that, these companies got consolidated very quickly. Right. Like very all cool. the companies did it at the same time. They like all had the same research. They guess they, you know, they, they crunched the numbers and they're like, hey, we don't want to take risks. We're just going to put out the same, you know, we put out the same big franchises and maybe do some moonshots, you know, for these big, big games of service, but nothing like not a creative moonshot. Mm -hmm. They just want a big upside. They don't want to spend a hundred million and make $200 million. They want to spend a hundred million and make a billion dollars. They don't over want, 10 years they, they don't on want the to, same game yeah. on the same. Yeah. They want their Fortnite. They want their PUBG. Yep. They want their destiny. They don't want to make a game for, you know, yeah, 50, you're not, 50 you're million Bioshock now. Right. No. There's, yeah. Right. Bioshock is, yeah. That first Bioshock game just isn't happening ever again. They're not or satisfied. The or the third one. Right. Or the third one. The third one I didn't like that much, but yeah. It was on the list, top 100. I know, it was on the top 100. <laughs> but the first one is significantly better. I, I agree with you there, but yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. I don't know. Too but much research and these come. It's too much <clears throat> research and then everybody chasing the graphics too. Like the graphics got too good to where it costs so much to make them, make the games. and And just have so many programmers doing all of this that it kind of got out of having that second tier of games that were like, okay, this, this still looks good enough. Right. But like, just throw people, a filter like reasonable on size teams could like make it and like take more chances on it. Yeah. Well, you have to get those frame rates, right? Otherwise the internet goes crazy. So, you know, a lot of it also has to do with that. I mean, the user, the game player has become significantly more toxic in the last five years. And that, I think, has had an impact on game development. The toxic fan community. You have people that get burnt out and they quit in games that could be finished by talented people. Just They're like, screw it. I'm just going to go program computers for a bank and make twice as much money and go home at a reasonable hour and not have to deal with people on the internet. And I do think that that's part of it. I think the toxic fan base has done damage to the video game industry. Interesting. Yeah, it's not helping. Nope. Uh, Red Tank writes in and says, why do you think Microsoft is having such a hard time getting good exclusive games out for the Xbox? They forgot to make them five years ago. Yeah, at COVID. <laughs> That's slow. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, just, it takes a long time to make these big games. And they, I, you know, they're they trying to rush things. Too late. Yeah, they got started late. They're trying to rush it. And it's, it's not easy. I, that, that's the answer. Because they're trying to do something that's incredibly difficult. <laughs> I think they need to. If they truly want to invest and get like the top quality games, they've got to change their their focus internally and have a team that's focused on making sure that there's quality reviews along the way and that there's like a a standard of like okay like somebody has to come in and with a vision like an overall vision of like this is what we're doing on these games and this is there th this is a gate that we're not going to let this game release until it's through this gate and we all agree that this is of caliber do you think they should be focusing on smaller games that they could put out? I don't care what they focus on. Just make them so that they're done. And good. 
Been well, good. you know, like it's if Redfall wasn't their first game in forever, like if there was like two smaller games in between that were like high quality, you know, like a Rogue Legacy 2 type of thing, because that's a really good game that I know we both liked. If they came out with something that was as good as that game. I don't I don't think so. I don't think it's about the scope with near Microsoft size. It's a it's about the willingness to make it good and polish. Like that's I, I would point like. If I was Microsoft, I would go to the Forza Horizon team and get their input on every game on whether or not it was ready to release. Is this the that only is, game that's good? That is your studio that puts out a good game, a a top finished tier game, game. top mm-hmm. tier finished game. There's no like, there's no shortcuts there. It's hey, this is a a game. We have very limited mechanics, right? Like it's there's not a ton of mechanics to that game. But it's fun. But it it, it looks does great. one it's thing got... and it does it well. Drive, yeah. drive, drive. This game you drive, so we make sure everything drives well. Right. Yeah. Like they're that's their studio right now. Right? Like that's Yep. That's the one. That's the one you can point at and go, like, they they're doing it right. The only one. Like, Halo fucked up. Yep. Can't Halo... even say that. Yeah. I don't know. That that infinite game. I don't yeah. Too many cooks in the kitchen on trying to make that something that it didn't need to be. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's uh, any other ones here that we need to get to. I think that's pretty good. 